Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Hammer Podcast. Today is November 5th, 2020, and I'm speaking with Alex. Alex went to the Agape Boys Ranch in Stockton, Missouri. Am I correct on that? You are correct. All right. So we're just going to go ahead and give the floor to Alex and uh, let him uh, uh, tell us how things went on there and how you're doing now. Go right ahead, Alex. Well, uh, first things first, I got sent there because I was pretty much brainwashed by someone I dated in, in high school and uh, it got to the point to where it made me do things I would have never done as a normal person like as myself right and uh, really it's been like I would sneak out of the house go to her house and, and then I'd come back home or I'd go to school I started missing school because of that and I, I admit that's not a good thing and so my parents took me to a therapist, uh, my therapist, and asked me, he started asking me why I did everything I did, and I blankly told him, I do not care. I really didn't care uh, at that point because I, I was just so starstruck with this girl. I didn't want to, I didn't want to lose her. Well, right. that, eventually that didn't matter, so. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> hey, well, what, what, and what years were you there? I was only there for a little less than a year. I was okay. there for 2019. I got there January 28th. So that was um, Devin who was on here. Um, his and my birthday are the same day. Okay. So it was a couple days after my birthday as well. Okay. So, yeah, we got sent there. He got sent there a day after for his second time. I got sent there for the first time. And he kind of helped me through everything, uh, helped me feel a little better about everything. I was there all the way up until a couple weeks before Thanksgiving okay. of 2019. Um, so my therapist asked me to leave the office or leave his room so he could talk to my parents about everything. And I can only assume they were talking about the next plausible option was a boarding school. So a couple days after, after that visit, my dad picked me up from school and said we're going to go down to Missouri to see a specialist. And we got to this place. I had no idea where I was. We were literally in the middle of nowhere. It was like no man's land. <laughs> and uh, got in that, that room where uh, Charlie came in, talked to us, and basically told us this is a boarding school. And I had no idea about this until I got in that in that room. I had uh, another student, a staff member there, and they all left the room. And my I looked to my dad and said, "Are you really sending me to this place? It's like it's the only option I can do." So that's pretty much all that led up to me getting there. Okay. So what what color shirt did you start off with? When you get to Agape Boarding School, no matter if you've been there before or if you have, or if you're like fresh, you're new there, you start out in an orange shirt. Orange shirt, okay. Which is uh, basically when you're an orange shirt, you have a guide, a burgundy shirt, and uh, he pretty much shows you around anything. He can give you push ups or any, uh, for anything bad you do. Since you're new, it, they kind of go a little easy on you for for you being there, but after two weeks, they start up in the ante and everything, and they make you go to basically military-grade workouts for, like, six hours a day for two weeks straight. Wow. And I, I couldn't handle that. It was... <laughs> I made it through, but I hated myself the entire time. It was like, I knew I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> <laughs> Did you uh, did you get a chance to see Brian's Jurassic elbow? <laughs> no, no, never got the Jurassic elbow, huh? I did not. Oh, you're lucky. Then. I, I, uh, the entire time there, I did my best to stay out of trouble, so I wouldn't have to deal with any staff issues or other student issues. But that didn't help out whenever I got further in the program, and I became a red shirt, which was the second highest rank. 
Okay. Did you, uh, so you were in charge of some kids as well? I was in charge of my company. Um, I could make announcements to the student body, and I also uh, were, were in charge of the brown shirts in my company. Did they ever tell you, you know, these kids that are coming, these brown shirts, you need to work them, work them hard, give them push-ups, do whatever, even though they didn't do anything wrong? Some of those kids say um, they wouldn't listen to anything I said. Uh, they, they, sorry, it's kind of hard for me to talk right now. Um, the way people play things there, it's basically, um, perspective of persons, like, choose your person. It depends on who you are, as if they'll listen to you or not. I was not a very, um, I would say, like, respectable person to any, any lower rank for what they see. I did my best to control them, but they would never listen to me. And um, you weren't. It always you, gets. To, you weren't very vocal then, basically. I did my best uh, to be that way, but they, they didn't care who I was or what I was doing. They right. they wouldn't listen. Okay. But things got a, a little stressful there. Whenever I first got there, I was in emotional turmoil the entire time, and uh, for two weeks straight, like every night, I'd cry myself to sleep. Because I literally had everything, and in a snap of a finger, I had everything stripped away from me. And uh, that's a feeling I never want anyone else to feel. Because, like, knowing you can get everything ripped away from you in the blink of an eye. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's quite, uh, to go from this to this is, yeah, it's quite, quite traumatic sometimes. Yeah. It, I, I've... I still deal with bad dream, uh, bad dreams, and kind of PTSD. I don't know if you necessarily call it that way from what's happened at Agape. Sure. It's sure. uh Yeah, PTSD. It, it was a rough ride. I mean, it just doesn't happen in the military. It happens to you know people as well that are not in the military that have go yeah. through a traumatic experience. Of course. Yeah. You know? So I mean, you see any other kids get their asses beat or? I've been slammed myself been slammed by okay. um in the shower bay is where everyone goes to get ready for bed or get ready for the day and if you're not quiet in the shower bay the whole company will either go down and push a position you'll you can possibly get demoted and uh you can get restrained if you're not controlling yourself or if you're being loud they can they've put us in self-restraint in the shower bay several times and uh we, our co entire company went to push the position, and we had this uh, staff, uh, I'm just going to say uh, Duncan, for, for him. We had this staff member. He, uh, he uh, our entire company went into push the position for, um, from our group leader, putting us in push the position from being loud. And we had to stay down there after every other company went back up to the dorm floor. And it got to the point where Duncan had to take over. And he wouldn't let us get up until we did at least 200. And uh, sometimes they bluff. He was bluffing at that point, which I didn't really know. I was a yellow shirt then, and I was doing my best. We had already done like 75 straight, and we were standing in push-up position. And I was struggling to keep myself up. So I was like making grunting noises, and he looks at me and says, and says, stop crying. And I look, I looked at him straight in the eyes and yelled, I am not crying. He comes over, comes over to me. And, um, he said, what do you say? You're going to yell at me? He takes his radio, throws it in the locker, picks me up by my shirt and says, you're going to yell at me. And I'm just as calm as I can. I'm, I'm not going to yell at you anymore. He says, oh yeah. Slams me on the ground, says, do your push-ups." And that le that left me blacked out for the rest of the night. I had no idea what ha what happened after that until I got into my my rack and uh, realized that I was actually awake. <laughs> did, did you land on Did you land on your head? I landed on my stomach. Okay. But it it like shocked me like so traumatically because I've never had that happen to me before. Right. Right. Especially somebody you don't even know and has like more strength than you has the possibility to hurt you physically. So. I mean, for a person that's, you know, I, I don't know if you worked out before you went to Agape, but a lot of, a lot of kids that uh, 
that have never worked out in their life or you know, haven't done but maybe 10 push-ups in their life, to go from that to 200, that's... Yeah. I mean, I had a feeling I could do at most 50 at a time, uh, at a time because um, I am a freestyle BMX rider, and I do a lot of physical exercise almost every day on my bike. So it builds up my upper upper body muscle and leg muscles. Right. But it's, it's a little different whenever you kind of stop for, like, two weeks before you went there. <laughs> because your dad runs over your bike, and you're like, wow. great. <laughs> yeah. What, uh, what dorm were you in? We were all in the same dorm floor. Uh, the, when they say dorm floor, it's literally just one room. Oh, okay. With uh, with racks, there was at least uh, 160 racks in there. I thought there was different dorm names for each for each. Well, dorm. eventually, um, they uh, added another dorm floor for people who, basically, they say they gave up on. They um, they'll put them up there, kind of getting like a start. Um, it's basically not really secure up there while on the main dorm floor. There, you got like staff roaming the floor and everything, and if if you're out of your rack or anything, they will try. To, they'll think you're running, and they will restrain you. And um, up there, um, with uh, the new dorm floor they made, uh, they had at most 10, 15 people up there, and. Like I said, it's basically like for everyone they gave up on. Like they had no point of being there, so they just like threw them into a different dorm floor. And, and basically, the staff they put up there didn't care what you do, so it was basically saying do whatever you want for the night. Wow. But it, I never got a chance to be up there because apparently they had a little faith in me, but <laughs> it. <laughs> I don't see why, because now I'm struggling in life, so. <laughs> yeah. Are you are you seeing uh, some sort of therapist or something like that? For... As, as much as I need to, I'm not. Okay. Okay. Uh, um, as far as the, actually, I asked this from, from every guy that went to agape was the food pretty good or was it slop or um we had this uh this lunch guy for a little bit and i forgot his name i'm not gonna lie he was there for like the first three months i was there and then he left and then we didn't have a chef the uh for about four months and then we got this uh new chef who actually made really good food i mean it was actually really, really great but for that entire time of us not having a chef, it was either sandwiches or just whatever they scrap up. Sometimes they didn't even have enough food for some of the students. You think you would think with the amount of money that your parents are paying yeah. for this place? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? So I, I think I think your dad was getting ripped off, basically. He. <laughs> the reason he pulled me out is because he didn't like what it was doing to my emotional state. Okay. It was uh, tearing me up from the inside, and I'd try to hide it to do my job. But it got to the point where every time I called them, it was just me crying on the phone telling them how bad the place was. They didn't have people checking on the phone or hanging up if you said anything? If you were a uh, orange shirt for your first phone call, okay. it is monitored. But every phone call after that is not monitored. Wow, they're really laxing on the on the rules there. It used to be they would check your phone and they would uh, look at your letters that you wrote and the letters that came in. They will look at your they will look at your letters and they will look at the letter, uh, at the letters that come in to make sure you're not getting anything that's contraband or such as and. Um, if you're on the phone, it's just like a 15-minute phone call. So they right. they would feel they would feel like since it's quiet in there, they can hear what you're actually saying. I try to be as quiet as I could whenever I was talking to my parents because I didn't want them to feel like I was manipulating them or anything. But it was really a hard time when I was there because on my visit was probably the hardest and actually the first one I've ever seen my dad cry, and um, like right before he left. Uh, 
So you go, go ahead. <laughs> was it he was crying because of what he saw that he put you through, basically, or? It was it was basically crying because he felt like he was doing me good, but on the inside I was actually in a very deep state of depression. Okay. And uh, whenever he left, I had cried for two more weeks after that. But on a visit, basically, whenever they uh, bring your parents in for your first visit, they have a student parent orientation, which is basically them telling you don't believe anything they say. It's uh, because they're going to try to manipulate you and help you go home right. or and help them go home. And uh, for the entire time of my visit, we had a tour there, but I would try to talk to my dad about something, and I feel like he was, he was listening, but he wasn't believing me. He'd say he was, but I feel like he wasn't because of what they told him. You know, at that time, it would have been good to have had, like, a second language. Yeah. <laughs> spoken in Russian or French, they would have never understood you, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? But uh, there's, there were some people there who knew two languages and would uh, sometimes call their parents in a different language. But in the first phone call, it has to be in English if you know right. it. Yeah. Uh, did your parents... What, where did your parents hear about this place? Was it a, a church member? or did you, did you go to church at all? I'm not exactly sure. I have a feeling they... Uh, whenever they talked to my therapist at the time... He uh, maybe said something about a boarding school, and they possibly went online and looked up boarding schools, and that just happened to be one of the first ones that popped up. Right. Right. We had somebody, uh, I can't remember who it was, I was having a discussion with him. He said that they pay a lot of money to Google to get that top spot. You know what I mean? So. I, th I think I watched that one. I think that one was Devin. Yeah, it could have been Devin. Yeah. So. Yeah, so I mean, they're they're not exactly uh, starving over there. They're they're making quite a quite a bunch of money. Yeah. So, you know, and, and like I like I tell all the guys, it's it's all about the money is what it's about. They, they they could give a shit less about you know your feelings or or how they treat you as as long as as long as the checks are you know aren't bouncing, they're good. You yeah. know, and that's how it is. And it's you know that's it's religious. It's I believe it's Baptist. You know. So it is. It is a very deep Baptist. It's an independent fundamental Baptist. Yeah, I, I which know. Which is I know. basically they. I'm sorry. That's okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> basically, they um they go through everything in the Bible, and uh, you have to wear certain things. You have to wear uh, do certain things. You have to. It's basically like whatever it says to do in the Bible, they're gonna do it. Oh yeah. And. It's like a really strict life, you know. I know. I know all about the Independent Fundamental Baptists. I was in one of the churches down in uh, South Texas. Oh. So, okay. Oh yeah, I know about them. They're they're and the problem is with a lot of these schools, it's it's hard to prosecute them. You know, they're they're yeah. they're greasy pigs is what I call them. You, you know, you've you seen a pig when they pig wrestling when they try to grab the pig and he's all greased up and they keep slipping out of. That's the way they are. Yeah. You know, I mean, sooner or later, something's going to happen. I know there's a couple of places that have been closed. Uh, a guy, I believe he was with Victory Christian Academy for girls. He just died. So, you know, it, it, all, it all washes out in the end, I believe. They'll get theirs. Yeah. So. <laughs> so, you said it was November of last year when you got out? It was uh, around November 15th, I think. Okay. So it was somewhere along the lines. It might have been a little after or before, but it was sometime before Thanksgiving. Okay. So uh, do you still have a good relationship with your parents? I have a better relationship with my dad than I have ever had. After I got back, I uh, had a good relationship with my stepmom, but we got in a very big argument that caused me to move out. And... I'm still kind of rebuilding that relationship. A lot of it was kind of the trauma of me being locked up for almost a full year and me not wanting to have to go through that again. Right. Because yeah. her, her, her idea of it was she thought it made me a better person from what I went through, but she didn't think the place was good. 
And uh, after getting out of Agape, I never got my credits. I was about two years ahead in, uh, in, uh, in my paces. I forgot what grade. It was, so, it was a grade in high school, I believe. And um, never got the credits for that, which would have been added on to my transcripts, would have, would have gotten me back in 12th grade. Right. Where, where I was supposed to be. And uh, they put me in an online school very unprepared and basically the same thing as Paces because I wasn't doing very much in Paces because I was struggling with it. The way they did the Paces there, it made it really difficult to get done with one really quick and be able to test on it and then get your next one back. This was, uh, They had me on an online school for that and I had a hard time getting up to be able to do it because my sleep schedule is completely messed up after being there for almost a full year and also the motivation to do it because I was forced to do it for almost a full year. Yeah, the, the, the stress and anxiety can, can take their toll, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, and, and sometimes like, you know, like, like you did, it, sometimes you just, it just comes out, you know, and whoever is, mm -hmm. whoever's there gets the brunt end of it. You know? Yeah. So, I mean, it's, that's perfectly normal. I mean, it's, you know, it's just something, something you just got to deal with, you know what I mean? In right. time, in, I mean, it's not going to go away overnight. It probably, you know, I was talking with my friend James, he was there, got, he said it, it, it won't go away. It's just, I mean, you can, you can try to suppress it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But as far as it going away completely, it's, it's always going to be there. I mean, you know, it's not trying to scare you or anything, but, you know, yeah, know. Trauma, trauma can be a lifelong thing, you know? It's been almost a full year since I left Agape, so right. I, I know a little bit about how it's not going to completely vanish, but it's still going to be there to kind of torment you a little bit. Right. It'll always be in the background. I mean, sooner or later, you know, you'll be able to function normally, you know, but it's always mm -hmm. going to be back there, you know. You can't yeah. erase it. So, I mean, I still have trauma from, from when I was in the school there. I mean, it's, it's back here, you know, I, I never think about it, but when it comes up soon, you know, sometimes I have my days where I just think about it and just, it angers me, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and then, and doing interviews or discussions with, you know, guys that have been through the same thing. I mean, I, I wasn't at a boarding school, it was, it was, a, it was a regular school, but it was, all, it was at the church, you know? And yeah. But still, I mean, and to see you guys go through that stuff, I mean, it angers me, you know, especially <laughs> when it's a religious organization that's supposed to be going by the Bible. I mean, <laughs> the Bible, I mean, if you follow the Bible, I guess you'd be a criminal in every state, but uh, yeah, I know, guess so. they, they, they follow the good book, as they call it. You know, it's supposed to provide morals and everything, and it turns out that it doesn't make you any better. It makes you worse sometimes. Yeah, you know, some people get brainwashed into it, and they, and, you know, they, they stay that way, but some people are just saying enough. I've had enough, just, mm -hmm. you know. So, so how, how's your life? How's your life so far since uh, you got out? It's been I'm, uh, a year. I'm still almost. I'm still struggling, really, really in a tough spot right now with uh, my schooling and everything. I'm not in school currently right now and I haven't graduated and my I'm working at a dead end job right now trying to make enough money to live off of. So there you go. Well you know that that program that they have, that A C E or whatever, accelerated Christian education, there's only yeah. one, there's only one word for that for that program. Garbage is what it is. Yeah. It's complete garbage. So I mean, because you know, I've, I've seen a lot of people that have gone through that program who try to get into a public school, and the credits don't transfer. So you basically yeah. have to start two or three grades behind. That's what's happened to me. I was supposed to be in 12th grade after I got back, and I'm, uh, it ended up pushing me back to, like, 10th grade. Yeah. Yeah, garbage. And I'm, I, I can't be a 21-year-old uh, in high school still trying to graduate, so... You ever I'm still trying to figure it out. You ever thought about getting the GED? That's my next step. I'm actually in the process of uh, uh, talking to a counselor about that and yeah. getting things sorted out with that.
of course, that wouldn't be my best option for what I want to do in the future, but it, it will still get me to a point of being able to financially sustain myself and be able to keep a house and keep a steady job. I hear you. Well, that's good, man. It's good to see that uh, you're taking the necessary steps to come out of that. That's good. That's good. Yeah. So, but, um, you know, as far, like I said, as far as your emotional state, are you, are you okay? I mean, so far, I mean, as far as... It, it varies on the day. Um, the nights I usually have when, whenever I go to sleep and I have bad nightmares about agape or the days that I just want to be left alone, but I can't because I end up having to go to work that day and be talked to. Right. Or I just, it just doesn't leave my mind. It's put a lot of trust issues on, uh, in my mind with people and how I see different situations. Right. It's, it's changed things for the worse in my emotional state, but I'm still trying to make the most of life of what it is right now. Okay. Well, I hope uh, you get some help there, man. Yeah. You know, it's. I think once once you can uh, get your GED, get you know, get yourself a better job, you can, you know, get to the point where you can get yourself some sort of counselor or therapist or something to help you through it. P please don't go to the church counselors. Okay. <laughs> those are the ones. Yeah. To, those are the ones that screwed you up in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> don't go to those religious counselors. You go to a counselor or a therapist, and they say they they're religious. Just walk out the door, man. <laughs> because it's not gonna, it's not gonna help you one bit. Go to a licensed, you know what I mean, a licensed yeah. therapist. So, but, all right. Is there anything else that uh, you want to share? I think I got most of it out. There's a couple more things about how things work there. Sure. But it's a. Uh, the whole restraining process has left me with a very big scar in my in my life. It's like when I was a red shirt there, I had to go to Brown Town, which is where they send every every brown shirt or everyone from the school who decides to do what they want and not do their paces. Um, they get sent to Brown Town, which is basically mil military grade workouts. Of course, what 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 else would teach us any better than forcing us to do? things that we can't handle and uh there was a there was a point where i had to uh be out of the school and help out with brown town as a red shirt as an authority figure at agape and we ended up having to restrain one of the kids there first uh, the staff member started to restrain him and then he looked at me and said so are you gonna help and he made me kneel down on his knee or on his legs to where he'll stop moving. And it was the worst feeling ever. Because I, the way he was screaming means he was in real pain. He literally felt like he was going to die at that point. Because I can tell from the way he was moving and the way he was crying and screaming, it was unbearable. And to know that I helped do that to someone at Agape was the worst feeling in my life that I've ever done to anyone. And that emotion, emotionally and mentally scarred me because I never wanted to ever hurt anyone in that way. So, But, but the only problem is if you didn't, if you didn't do it... I would have gotten restrained. You would have gotten restrained. Yeah. 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 So it, it's it's kind of a catch twenty two. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's you know I mean you you want to look out for your own safety, but then again, if <laughs> this other kid, you have to. It's it's not a good thing. I you know. know. It, it's 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 going to be horrible if, if these guys that are restraining these kids end up killing one of them. It's. They're. They are being hard on those kids for what they think they are capable of. They're going to end up doing something that's going to physically disable someone for the rest of their life. Yeah. Yep, and when that happens, there's going to be lawsuits, and that place is going to get shut down. 
Yeah. But I hope it doesn't come to that. I mean, I hope they get shut down in other ways besides, mm-hmm. you know, hurting a, hurting a kid. You know what I mean? Yeah. But to some, with, with some of the guys that I've talked to, you know, James and Devin and some of the uh, Mike, those people are out of control. They're just, I, they're out yeah, of control. Yeah, I know. And it's, like I said, it's only a matter of time. They, they will do anything to get money, and they will do anything to the kids to make them not talk and for them to stay there so they can keep getting paid for keeping their kid there. Right. That really, really sucks, man. My, my dad was the hero in this whole thing. He had to pay three... I want to say, like, I don't even remember how much. It was somewhere along the lines of 3000 or 30000 to get me out of there. Wow. I, I feel like it was more like three 3000 but I, I don't want to be wrong about that. Well, just... It would be safe to say in the thousands, basically. Yes. Oh, man. Yeah. That's just ridiculous. Mm. Did, did he sign a contract? He signed a contract for a full year. For a full if year. You break, if you break the contract, you have to pay to get your kid out. Well, you were there almost a year, right? I was there for almost a full year, but my dad didn't want them to do any more to me. Because he felt like it was doing more harm than good. And he was right. It, he was correct. He read my mind through every phone call. You know, being a being a parent myself, you can tell. You know what I mean? You can tell when your kids are 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 suffering emotionally. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely. Man, that's that's um. It can be a bitter pill to swallow sometimes. I know. I mean, when you, uh, you know, you find out, uh, me coming from a parent's point of view, you know, when you, when you get there to pick them up and you find out that your kid is just emotionally wrecked from this place, when you thought that it was going to be doing them some good, getting some discipline, but it ends up doing the opposite, man, that, that, that hits you, man, that hits you right here. Yeah. And you, it, I, I think your dad might not recover from it either, emotionally. You know what I mean? He he said the day that he dropped me off there was the worst day of his life. Yeah. He he didn't remember the entire six hour right or drive home. The entire time he was just lost in his thoughts about me being okay. And I'm not gonna lie, the the first couple weeks I was there, I didn't think I was gonna make it out. I thought I was gonna end up being pushed to the point of no return and killing myself there. Because it was emotionally tearing me apart, very piece by piece. It hurt every second of the time. Did you did you talk to these guys, these these staff members, about uh, your emotional state? Did they did not there was a, did they not seem to care? There was a staff member there. Um, he was the main counselor that you had to talk to. If you talk to a staff member, they wouldn't do anything about it. They would direct you to that counselor, and that counselor just gave me Bible things to read, to read, and that's it. He might as well have given you a book with just blank paper in it. I know. <laughs> wow. That's... Sorry, Alex, we can't help you, but here, here's a book. Jesus saves... <laughs> Get right with God and you'll be fine. What a load of shit. You know. Yep. Oh. Now, as far as any type of uh, abuse, I mean, I, I've heard uh, about a lot of other types of abuse, not just emotional and physical. There is a staff member in night shift who got taken off a night shift for punching a kid in the face during his shift. So, and they tried to cover it up by taking them off night shift and replacing them with someone else. Yeah. But every student knew about it. Yeah. No. So, it wasn't necessarily the kid. It it was an 18-year-old, but still, you can't be doing that to anyone. No, you can't. (laughs) Even though you signed a contract, you don't sign a contract to get your ass beat. Yeah. You're there for discipline or whatever, and that's not what they're giving you. You know, I mean, if you want to do, go 
go through a military style program, go into the military. You know what I mean? <laughs> I know, right? Boarding school is to learn. Boarding school is not to be given my, calisthenics. My brother's in the Navy, and he even, he even said that place was tough. Yeah. The place that I was at. Yeah, a lot of guys that I've talked to that uh, went through there, they said when they went into the military, it was a breeze <laughs> <laughs> to go through the boot camp and everything because yeah. of what they went through at Agape with the constant calisthenics and everything like that. Kind of, yeah. kind of toughened them up a little bit as far as physically, you know, but still, I mean, it's, it's still no. There's no reason for you know making you do 200 push-ups or punching you in the face or slamming you. There's no, there's no reason for that at all. I know, they're supposed to be there to help you, not to yeah, not to discipline you in ways not even your parents would. They're there to help you, not hurt you. Yeah, and they're doing the opposite. They're hurting you. So, I mean, I'm sure there were some young kids there. I've heard that there's been kids there as young as nine or ten. There was a kid there who was like, yeah, uh, a little kid named Zach. He showed up when he was like nine, and I have a feeling he's still there. Wow. He, uh, he's been a brown shirt for as long as I can remember when I was there. I don't know if he's doing better now. Uh but he was a brown shirt when I left. So are you a member of the uh, Facebook page, the Agape Homies? I am not. I don't think so. Yeah, go on Facebook, man. There's guys from Agape there. Okay. And, uh, it's a private, it's a private uh, uh, Facebook page. You know, you have to answer questions and stuff. But, you know, being that you were at Agape, I'm sure it wouldn't be any problem. But, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a Facebook group or... All the people that are on that page are all from Agape or went to Agape. There's no staff members or anybody else on there. It's just survivors of Agape. So some, okay. something to think about, you know what I mean? That way right. you, you can have some support, you know. And I'm sure you, you still talk to Devin, correct? Yeah, uh, I still have him on my phone. still talk okay. to him. Good, good. Support, man. You need a support system. Can't do it on your own. Yeah. I know. So... It's always good to have people there to talk to, especially when you're, when you have that one moment. You know what I mean, where you just mm -hmm. at your at your worst. You just call call them or you know get online with them, and it helps. It helps a lot. Yeah. So, like I said, something to think about. Like I said, you go on Facebook. You know, after we're done or whatever, go on there and uh, check it out. Sounds All good. Right. All right. Uh, anything else you want to add or? I think I brought up the blonde of it. Okay. All right. Well, like I said, if you think of anything else, you know, maybe we can get you and Devin on. You know what I mean? If you guys want to have yeah. a, another discussion or whatever, sure. That'd be yeah, really that'd be, great. That'd be great. Just, uh, you know, just get in touch with Devin. You know, let him know if you guys want to come on. I'll, I'm pretty flexible. You got the number to, to uh, get a hold of me. Great. Right. We can make this happen. I might. I was going to get James on here, but James has some other stuff he was doing. So right. maybe we can get him on there as well. Because he's, he's from the old school Agape. He's like, I believe, uh, <laughs> late 90s, early 2000s. So, you know, he might have some more questions. You know, he kind of helps me out sometimes. He was there when Devin was on to kind of yeah. help me out with the questions. And that, actually, that was the day. It was an hour before the podcast that my computer went down. <laughs> yeah, so I, I have another computer. It's, a, it's got a Windows 8, but it's not very powerful. You know what I mean? Right. So... Yeah, that's why I didn't do a lot of the stuff that I normally do with the podcast. But yeah, so it was it was a good it was a good uh, time. So yeah, just uh, get back in touch with me, and uh, like I said, we can get James and Devin on, have a little rap right. session or whatever. That'd be great. Sounds man. good. All right. Sounds good. Well, you take care of yourself, man. You know, if you got, you know, like yep. I said, if you need that support, you know, get some get some people. I will. All right. All right, Alex. We'll talk to you later. Talk to you later. All right, man. You stay safe. You too. Take All it right. easy. You too. Bye.